Okay guys, came back into the studio for this one and today we're going to talk about cycles and manifestation. So if you haven't had a chance yet, really dive deep into these 88 days, into this, into all of the days that I've posted thus far. We've got over 30 days posted, right? And I want you to really dig deep into your soul, into what's happening with you, into your shadow work, into really analyzing your life up until this point. And the reason I want you to do that is because then now we can begin to identify cycles in your life. If you're not sure who I am, my name is Dr. Lisa Burr. I'm a doctor of metaphysics and divinity, so I cannot write you a prescription, but I can recommend a good crystal. And here we go. Cycles. Why are cycles in your life? so important in this process of manifestation and identifying those cycles. Because what you're going to find as you're going along and you're manifesting your best life and you're continuing to manifest and continuing, you know, this process, because the process of creation never ends. You're always going to be creating something else in your life, right? So you want to be able to, to identify at what point during the manifestation process of certain things or certain events, does it seem like there's a holdup? Does it seem like all of a sudden I can't do it anymore? Does it seem like it's not working? And because of certain cycles in your life, you are going to find that you're going to hit a plateau. You might hit this like, you know, ceiling and all of a sudden it just stops. That's because there's a little bit of unhealed or unattended to energy throughout this process that is a repetitive cycle. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay, let's take it like this. So if you are manifesting a promotion in your job, okay, let's say you're doing that. I've done that many times, right? So let's say you're manifesting a promotion and You've gotten promotions before and you're kind of going up the ladder, but there's this one level in your biz, in, in your, in your, in your career that you just can't seem to break through. Now, conventional wisdom would say, well, okay, that's a glass ceiling. And you, you'll probably look for things like gender or race, maybe even education, um, those things like that as reasons why you're not able to break through that glass ceiling. And I'm not going to tell you that that might not be the case there. It could be that or, and, or it could be this, that because that's what you're looking for, because that's the programming that you've internalized, right, wrong, or indifferent. I'm not assigning any type of energy towards it. But because that is the, that, that, that's, that's the cycle that you've heard. That's the program that until you, when you get to a certain level at that company, at any company, doesn't matter. You hit the glass ceiling, something happens. You get downsized, you get let go. Maybe you do something, right? That causes you to get fired, you know, not laid off, but fired that there. And if you really, 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 really look at it, it probably is some sort of self-sabotage. This is where we begin to learn. We're going to be talking about taking various levels of responsibility in the next few videos. Okay. So what I noticed is I would get to a certain place. I would get to management. I would get to upper middle management just below C-suite. And all of a sudden something would happen each and every time I would get to this place where I was making almost six figures. I had organizations of, you know, 30 plus people that were reporting to me, be they supervisors and maybe team leads and representatives. Like it was, you know, significant. I would grow that, that, that organization, I would grow that department. But I would just get to this level and then all of a sudden something would happen. Now, initially it was, well, I didn't have a college degree. Or 
there really weren't many black and brown people in upper management in the C-suite level, or there weren't many women, if any, or, you know, I could find excuse after excuse after excuse. What I finally realized when I was about 49 or 50 years old, it literally took me that long. What I finally realized is that this was a cycle. And in order for me to break the cycle, I had to break how I was thinking, viewing myself, viewing the the landscape, viewing how things worked. And I had to take a different energy towards it. I was literally doing things to be, make them either self-fulfilling prophecies or I was doing self-sabotage. And it's really the same thing. So I was self-sabotaging so that this would then become a self-fulfilling prophecy. When I figured that out, I might have been 48, maybe 48, 49. When I figured that out, the next position that I got, first of all, I got my insurance license. I never thought I would do that. So this is right after my marriage fell apart. Anyway, so I got my insurance license, life and health, and then I started working for a Fortune 100 insurance company um, about a year after I got my license. And what happened there? Well, I broke the six figure, solidly broke the six figure mark. Then I bought my house, side note. And then I was up for various promotions. And honestly, if I'm going to be super honest, I legitimately like blew an interview that would have got me into the next stratosphere. And I did it on purpose for a lot of reasons, but I, you know, I would have had to relocate. This is right before the pandemic. There was a lot going on. And I, 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 at that time, I didn't really know all the rest of it, but honest to Pete, like, I sabotaged it on purpose because I decided I didn't want it, but I didn't want to tell them I didn't want it. It's a, it's weird. Um, so I didn't do as well in the interviews I knew I could. So I wouldn't have to relocate. But at that company, at that insurance carrier provider, I was able, I know I would have been able to get to C-suite. But my mindset changed. I broke the cycle of you don't have, you don't have this, so you can't. You're a woman, so you can't. You're a black woman, so you definitely can't. Like I broke that cycle of how I viewed myself and realized each and every time I did something to self-sabotage, right? So that's why I want you to identify if there's cycles of like toxic relationships, if there's cycles of you just get so far and then all of a sudden something happens. If you just almost get to the precipice of this thing and then something happens, that's a cycle I want you to identify. I want you to then look back as to why that cycle exists. Why does that cycle? How do you, are you feeling about yourself and what, what are the, 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 the programs that you have been taught? What are the things that you've been taught that this is the way the world is? I want you to really, really look at that because if you can identify those, then we can begin to like, tear that down and restructure your world so that it serves you and you're not serving the world. All right. Now, I hope this one helped. Please don't forget to give me a like, subscribe, a share, you know, follow, whatever it is. Click the plus button, click this button, click that button, whatever it is. Right. If you could do that for me, that'd be great. And because it's going to help the algorithm and we want more and more people. Can you identify some cycles? Can you leave me that in a comment? Okay. What cycles have you begun to identify in your life that are repeating? Okay, and then we can dive deeper into some of those explicit, those specific cycles, and then we can talk about how to relieve that. All right, peace, love, blessings, and joy be unto you today, tomorrow, and for all eternity. And never forget, give permission to your purpose to provide for your person. Talk to you soon. Bye.